the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah's Witnesses. My psychiatrist in 2010, she was a Jehovah's Witness. Now she was loving, but she was a rare exception. Every other, uh, with, uh, there are three exceptions. Every other, there's David Hanna. He was the assistant manager at Pizza back in 1990. He was the most smug, most arrogant, unloving son of a bitch. I remember he was fixing a light in the back room and said, he said, and David said, let there be light. And he turned the switch on and then he said, Dave rested from all the slavers. Just how big you think you are, big shot, you big shit. Arrogant son of a bitch. Most Jehovah's Witnesses people are smug, condescending, look at you with contempt, or shit asses. Now Sheena and Tina, who worked at Pizza, they are twin black sisters. They were Jehovah's Witnesses, but they were as worldly as lukewarm as they come. They loved to listen to the jukebox. Sheena loved that song, What About Your Friends? They schmoozed with the quote-unquote sinners who worked the Pizza Hut. Yet they went to the Kingdom Hall. They were Jehovah's Witnesses. I asked one of them about them one time. She's like, yeah, come on over. Come on to our church one Sunday night or something. They, they were best friends from Maurice Parker, and they gave him, him book, a book called Thy Kingdom Come. Now, Maurice Parker was seeking Jesus Christ. He really, he had been for under conviction for years. When I saw that book in his belongings, I knew better. I took that book, I destroyed it. I may have saved his soul. Now, William Bowers, the assistant manager, when he found out about it, he was really upset, upset, livid. He's like, I want you to get an, another book that you took from him. Another, the same book, which I never did, and he, he never followed up. Uh, William Bowers says, I, I used to be one of the witnesses. I couldn't do it. But now Maurice Parker is truly saved, believes Jesus, that Jesus is God, and he's on his way to heaven. Partly in thanks for that I destroyed, I saved him from becoming a Jehovah's Witness. Maybe he wouldn't have, but maybe he would have. But this video right here, if this is what a Jehovah's Witness is, I want no fucking part. In fact, looking at a world map, Sister Lett and I are able to calculate that during the past 20 years, we've attended assemblies, conventions, large gatherings. He's the leader of the Jehovah's Witnesses governing body. Look at his eyes. He looks he looks and sounds as fake as a football bat. As fake as a three dollar bill. He comes off as not believing any of this shit. But enjoying the riches. The loot. The big money. He gets for being the leader of a... What's his name? I don't know. Rings. And at least eight I'd rather die than be like this man. He has absolutely no love whatsoever for his fellow man. He looks like he's faking it. And he doesn't know that he's faking it. 82 different countries. And every one of them. If murder was legal, I'd want to kill this. If murder was legal, I'd want to kill this man. Yeah. Oh. I don't know why I just hate I, I hate this man this man makes me want to take my fist and bust his face bust his face like a fucking watermelon for a float with love I hate this motherfucker if murder was legal I'd kill this motherfucker of and joy 82 countries are roughly four different countries every year how many countries have you visited for free You'll also be treated like a celebrity among Jehovah's Witnesses. Look at these hypocrites. People will line up to welcome you and take selfies. 
And who knows, you might even get a few green handshakes. Wink, wink. Live for absolutely free, O Qadi. Are you one of Jehovah's Witnesses and want to be a member of the governing body? Let me tell you just some of the perks. You'll get to live and want to be a member of... Are you one of Jehovah's Witnesses and want to be a member of the governing body? Let me tell you just some of the perks. You'll get to live... For absolutely free, of course. It's in a suite located on a gorgeous 253 acre plot of land in New York State. It's absolutely beautiful. Lush forests, a serene lake. Here are some testimonials from current. It's very fun. Okay. Here's another scene of this. I'm trying to find this motherfucker's name. Jehovah's Witnesses are notorious for coming up with what they call new light every five minutes. It basically means the governing body wants to change their doctrine and they need an excuse to do it because they told everybody God speaks to them and them alone. How about the false prophecies of Jesus coming back? That right there makes them the cursed. You only get one chance. You make one false prophecy, you are the devil. Or either that or, or your God's not real. No, both all of the above. Anyways, they came up with some new light about babies of all things. Check this out. Sometimes you'll hear people say of a little baby, look at that little angel. But look at that hateful ass, fake ass, mother hypocrite motherfucker front like a motherfucker. I'd like to kill this motherfucker if murder was legal. More accurate would be to say, look at that I hate this man. enemy of God. Well then. That's something. Now, there's more context to this clip, and I'll play it in a second. But first, let's talk about why the concept of new light makes Who no sense. And other times, they release notoriously ridiculous new light. Let's get into it. This. New Light, as a concept, is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't have things operating exactly how God wants it to operate if he's talking Let's to them directly. Find this so they make up the New Light explanation when they want to change their beliefs. God revealed something new to them, and they're changing the way the organization operates to account for it. When you think about it, the belief seems incompatible with the idea that God never changes. Why doesn't he just lay out all the information for them up front so they can do what he wants them to do in the first place? A governing body member actually left the religion completely in 1981, disassociated himself. Then he went on to write a book about how destructive God the governing it. body is. It wasn't until that moment that the governing body decided that God gave them new light, saying the people who leave the religion of their own free will, called disassociation, should also be shunned, just like people who get kicked out or disfellowshipped. Why did God wait to tell the governing body until after one of them quit and wrote a book about it? Why did God ban organ transplants for over 10 years and then decide that organ transplants were okay? Why did God decide certain positions in the bedroom were a disfellowshipping offense in 1974, and then decide they weren't a disfellowshipping offense in 1978, and then decide they were again in 1983? Why'd they decide that taking blood transfusions, or even using a medicine that was developed... I cannot believe... Jehovah's Witnesses, the religion of the Jehovah's Witnesses had not completely crumbled. They're fake, they're con artists, they're liars, they're false prophecies, they're false prophecy mongers. And those of you who are truly born again, living among them, come ye out from among them, that among them, that ye be not partakers of the plagues. Destruction by the world governments. After the tribulation comes to a close, Armageddon starts. When they wouldn't have things operating ex in a second, but first, let's. That's. You see this satanic man? I can say with pleasure, he's gonna bust hell wide open, and he's gonna be burning in the lake of fire, screaming, hollering, ah! Hallelujah! Couldn't happen. It couldn't have happened. It couldn't happen to a finer motherfucker. There are good people going to hell because simply because they're not saved. I think it's high time someone like this goes to hell. Fucking bitch. 